perfect. It's great. Um, you know, I think Debussy liked to play on upright pianos. You know, most of us are happy when we get rid of our upright and get a grand, but Debussy gets rid of his grand and buys an upright. <laughs> um, and he would cover it with cloths. And it was so, such, the sound was so funny. You could do this very wispy kind of sound, and you could do all these kind of, all these things, and, and it would be easy to do, really, or at least not like we're, we're always struggling, struggling with, with our big pianos here. So let's, I bet you can play a lot softer sometimes, I think, than you do, and especially at the end when it's three keys. You know, this and. Have you ever found the key chords instead with a, a, hum, a harmonious, sort of distant sonority? Especially in a hall like this, such a beautiful hall, everything you hear, every single whisper. Um, we must draw the audience in. You know, there are times when we're playing, when we, we're speaking out to the audience, and then there are times when we're speaking to ourselves and we're inviting the audience to come into our private world. And this, it seems to me, a very, very private moment. Um, I think this piece needs to feel flowing, but also never agitated. So they're almost opposite ideas, aren't they? We need to feel that it's going like this all the time, but never it's going like this. So I felt that yours was a little bit agitated when it, it moved with these these chords now this time there's a little it doesn't need to do very much it can be gentle rubato gentle rubato but but just and there's these Gentle pianissimo, a little cantabile, but not too much, just so that it comes above the main voice. And with this, always the bottom note more than that. We don't want to hear, we want to hear. You know, the piano has certain notes that are just really beautiful, and I always think this B flat, just, it just always sounds so, so beautiful, and the B flat too. Just enjoy the sound. Let's just try it again, very calm. So you do three, two, one, then four, five, yeah, and then that, yeah. Try five, four, two. Try four, two on the second chord. Yeah, and keep your thumb in play. You see, it doesn't have to move that. Yeah. And then one, two, three on that. Is that what you... Because if your thumb has to move around, it's, oh, it's going to make it agitated, it, it, however you try. And we just want this. So that there's no motion. It's just that the reflections in the water, we see the reflection not with all sorts of agitation. We see a pure, perfect tree reflected in that water. And in fact, you know, sometimes when the water's so calm, you can't tell whether the tree is, is actually the water reflection or the real one. It, the reality becomes almost the same. And that's what I think we're looking for. Of course, we get a little bit of agitation further on, but this opening has to be so calm. Just try it once more. And also, the other thing, I think, imagine the piece has been going on for a few months, and then you join it. It was in the middle of the summer. You know, it was, the reflection's been there a long time, and it will be there after you've gone and after I've gone. But join it on the way. That's now very, very good. This one is beautiful. It's perfect. I'll buy that one. Won't buy the first one. I'm taking that back to the shop. Because it, <laughs> these three notes, we, it's, I don't want to hear a melody. Yeah, I don't want to hear, I want to hear three equal notes. Three complete equal notes. The 
first one has no swell or, or, or hairpins, and the second one has this little one just at the end of the first bar and straight away down again. Almost nothing, but it's just a little bit. This is, you know, here. It's a certain kind of expression. A little bit more romantic, the second one. The first one's more 20th century, the second one more 19th century. That's how I want it to be. feeling a bit uh, you I must I must play these now I must do what he's telling me to you forget what I've told you now just relax especially the elbow if the elbow is tight it's always going to be tentative you just you, you want arm weight the very free arm so that you can just be very very gentle with this maybe I've got a better piano but just three even notes and no rush if anything just take a little bit of a little bit of time between each chord. Just one more time. I wonder why that always gets louder. That um, happened a few times. What do you think? What, what fingering are you using there? because it, it will then confuse you with the three on the next. Try five, two, one on the second chord. Just try that on the B flat minor. Five, two, one. Yeah, no, that's right, yeah, and then five, two, one there. Five, two, one, no. Five, two, one. Yeah. Yeah, and don't try and pick, just, just nothing. It abstracts. What we must get, I mean, Debussy has great tunes, but this is not, this is abstract. It's like you go to an uh, art museum and someone says, well, what's that painting meant to represent? Nothing. It's just a color. It's a beautiful color or a beautiful set of colors. And that's exactly what this is. It's just, it isn't representing anything except reflections in the water, of course, indirectly, but just color. One more time, and then I promise you we'll, we'll go on. That's lovely. No rush. change of color isn't there here we want to I, I want to make all the notes must sound these harmonies are just some of the most beautiful four chords ever written for the piano I think it just sounds so he knew so well what sounds good on the piano did you see well, only he and Chopin I think had this supreme understanding of, of that um, I don't think there to any anyone else who quite got it uh, how these strings work so make sure we have enough. But wait a little bit towards the bottom. Try to feel the distance between these chords. Kind of. Just a tiny 
of it. And also try playing this before the left hand. But so close that it's a, you couldn't measure it. A microsecond earlier, but it will just... But you can do all four. Try it just for fun. No, just try the bit right before the left. So... But very close. Continue playing always. It's just a, a, a little color that you can use sometimes to play the right before the left. It's something Horowitz did all the time, um, sometimes very obviously, and sometimes. He would, but here, just if you want to color a chord in a particular way, it's just an experiment to try with it. But here, you might. I might just do it on that one or something. Just play around with it when you're practicing. just like this and there's a little ripple coming maybe it's a uh, I don't know an alligator going to appear out of the well, probably not in Paris but uh, let's try from here rush over all the time or just enjoy the, the sound goes up to piano from pianissimo again. And then up to pianissimo. The subtlety, you know, Debussy is, I'm actually working on both sets of image at the moment. The subtlety of Debussy is, is completely extraordinary. I sometimes get tears in my eyes because the, he, he just knows exactly what he wants. I mean, this is, you know, there are great composers and there are good composers and, and then there are sort of genius composers. And, and you know, Beethoven, you, you the sheer knowledge of what he wanted to put on the page is, is just thrilling because you know he knew. He, and there are some composers where it's a bit of guesswork in a way. I mean, even some famous ones. But Debussy, it's never guesswork, you know. It's almost too much, actually, because every single note has some kind of a dot or a dash. But let's at least in, enjoy the ones that, that, you know, are obviously important, like this. These two, they're not. They're stressed. The difference is minute. And then this piano. That gets the difference. And look at what he also has. Little diminuendo between the two notes. Pianissimo and down. Piano, the little swell. Pianissimo and down. It's very, very precise. One thing. like the fingering there of not doing the hand over because it's but but can you fake it as if it sounds so you just it's a little bit of don't make it sound too easy better better yeah carry on Really wonderful, Jeffrey. Just let me just add. 
bad, though, that when you go up, try not to make a crescendo to the top, because the, the strings are more bright. If anything, think of diminuendo as you go up to the top each time. So the... So, and where you come up, take time over the change. But, but we, usually when we have a difficult thing to do, we rush, and we, we try and get over it fast. But just allow the change over at the top to have have space, but that was really beautiful. And yeah, I mean, if you can play it that softly, you must. And I wouldn't, why, why change the pedal here? Just keep the pedal through, it's the same harmony. Can we just try it from here? But this, I, I want to hear these harmonies. Be careful, we really hear those, those amazing harmonies. And then and the, the contrast between the mezzo forte and the fixo. Uh, we can just go from here. Um, Debussy doesn't mark pedaling, but what he does mark is, is bass notes. And when he has a tied bass note, it's, I think, an indication of, of a pedaling, because it can't keep on. I mean, he didn't have a middle pedal, so we can't fool with the middle pedal like holding things on. And, and we shouldn't, because that's the wrong color. It's too clinical. It's too clean. So just, you know, here, don't, don't release the pedal too easily. Go to the, what we were talking about with the um, the, the, let's go to a level three or four where it's not completely released, where it's just the dampers are just brushing the strings. Try it once more. to go that final stage of, of evenness and also I don't want to hear I know you're fingering it taking the, the F in the left hand but don't let that bulge out so that it really has the, has a complete evenness um, we have a couple of minutes yeah, let's just um, carry on actually can we just go from the last second time this happened <laughs> dry it should it should have a, a, a seamless quality so this, 
this is all part of the same harmony of scale. Just from here, one step. I think we can come down from this big uh, climax just a little sooner than you do with even <laughs> down to sort of mezzo forte so so that we have time um, just yeah, so everything just a little bit earlier than he's written I think going to have to finish now but this I, I the only thing I, I didn't like was to play this just it seems too easy to do that somehow have you thought of just thinking just the top note with the left hand and doing this five four three I think it just it enables you to play it so I, I don't know it just I don't think there's anything wrong with rearranging things between the hands other than what the composer's written, but occasionally there's something to me about reaching over to play this that's actually part of the, the choreography of, of what's going on somehow. This isn't the same thing if you're playing it for a vis the audience is looking at you, you playing this. Um, well, we will have to stop, but uh, great, thank you. Thanks very much.